we got Darren Cruikshank back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Damian Brown at Ryzen 14 on December 31st. Darren, what's going on, man? How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. Just getting ready for the fight and uh, can't wait to show off you know, my skills. Yeah, and we're looking forward to it. But I understand you just uh, finished up a nap. Uh, how important are naps during training camp? Because uh, I'm a huge fan of naps personally, and I don't even I don't even fight for a living. You know, I I uh, I'm 33. You know, I think around 30 years old, you are allowed to take naps and not can make fun of you. So. You know, that's that's I just love naps. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if that's like a Michigan top team thing because I know Cody Stamen gets like he tells me he gets like ten hours of sleep some nights. He's the same way. I don't know if there's naps in there or how he does it, but he always uh, gets a lot of sleep. I wake up early. I don't know. My dog's waking up, and uh, around about this time, it's time for a nap. Yeah. No, for sure. I'm the same way. Get up early, get all that work done or whatever, if you've got stuff to do. And then if you can find time for a nap, it's uh, definitely key. But we're not here to talk about naps. We're here to talk about you. And of course, your last fight was awesome. Uh, I mean, it's just been the theme of your last couple ones. Uh, and, and it was over a notable opponent in Diego Brandao. Get that flying knee. Uh, could that fight have gone any better, in your opinion, getting another highlight reel finish? I think Diego Brandao also likes naps. Yes. <laughs> I guess we can keep the theme going. Yes. Uh, yeah, he's actually, I mean... You guys know who he is. He's a really tough guy. One, one of the ultimate fighters, uh, you know. Fought McGregor. Yeah, very high-level guy. And uh, I just showed up. And when I show up, lights out, baby. Yeah. And, and you've been on quite the roll right now. I think like a four-fight win streak right now. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Is it just, you know, you sort of finding your groove? Or, or what, is there anything you can pinpoint to, to the success you've had this year? Really, you know, I got to give it all to uh my team my team helps me out with everything as far as uh you know myself i mean i am getting into a groove i'm like the old man now yeah. <laughs> three and, uh, learning all the old man tricks and and just being comfortable and relaxed relaxed and i've seen a lot of things in my fight career so i'm really uh becoming my own and you become sort of this North American staple for Ryzen. I mean, you've been getting booked a lot, which is great to see. And obviously, they like you because of the you know the wins you've had. Um, so you find out you're fighting on the New Year's Eve card, which you know is pretty cool. But there's that extra little added thing that you got Floyd Mayweather in this card too. Like, how stoked were you to, to be on a card with this guy? Because that's going to bring a lot of eyeballs. That's huge. That's actually really cool. Um, hopefully, we're like in the same locker room. But I could see him having his own locker room. But uh, <laughs> I mean, he's Floyd. But uh, I think it's really cool. It's really good for uh, for me personally because everybody gets to see. Uh, you know, everybody's gonna uh, tune in on uh, you know on this on this card that's way across uh, in Japan, and and so it's gonna be getting a lot bigger views, and that's always good for me because I'm gonna put on a good show and people will be able to see it. Or are you a boxing fan in general? Like, do you generally watch Floyd's fights? I don't watch boxing. I don't watch any sports. Um, well, if, if hunting is considered a sport, I think you'd you'd watch a little bit of that, wouldn't you? I mean, I don't even watch hunting. Oh, really? uh, okay. I mean, unless I'm doing it, like I'm physically doing it right then, I don't really care. I'll watch the highlights later, but um, I'm just I don't know worried about whatever I'm doing at the time. And it, what, of course, you are doing uh, coming up here on the uh, 31st. You're fighting Damian Brown, which is another notable opponent. Your second straight uh, UFC veteran uh, in terms of an opponent. Uh, how do you feel like you match up against him? I think, uh, I mean, he's Australian. He's really close to, uh, like, Thailand. So, I mean, he's got a pretty good extensive Thai background. Um, I don't think those guys have such a great wrestling because, you know, it's like Australia. I don't know. Um, but uh, I, I think matchup-wise, uh, he's going to be slightly taller than me, but that's, like, the most – that's the case with everybody. He's going to come forward uh, like Diego did. Um I think he has a little bit more ability on his feet than Diego, but that doesn't say that Diego didn't have a lot of pressure like he did um, coming at me. Now, uh, do I have ways around people's striking and stuff? Yeah, I, I actually, I basically, if you watch my career, I make everybody look pretty stupid on their feet. And I think the same thing's going to happen here. He's going to push forward. He's going to, uh, you know, get into like a battle type of like hey let's go kind of thing and i'm gonna hit him and then he's gonna try to take me down and that's just what's gonna happen i mean it's just that's like every fight of mine 
Well, I was going to say, it must give you a lot of confidence because, you know, obviously his bread and butter is his striking and you're a striker and you've got power behind your strikes. I mean, we've seen that in your last couple of fights. So I think if it stays standing, like you said, things aren't going his way. He's probably shooting for that takedown. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the confidence level must be really high uh, taking a fight like this. Um, training camp, we talked about it there, Michigan top team. Anything different in all this camp or has it just been business as usual with the same training partners, yeah. Cody Stamen, guys like that? We actually have a new gym. Oh, we cool. Moved. We moved from, uh, from Dearborn to uh, about 20 minutes away uh, in Southfield, Michigan. We went from around 2,500 square feet with about 1,500 square feet of mat space to 6,000 square feet and about 4,000, maybe a little more, 4,500 square feet of just mat space. So uh, we made some big changes since my last fight. Um, it's actually really cool. Everybody that has fought so far since we've moved has been destroying people. Everybody from Michigan Top Team. Um, so that's exciting. Uh, and then this would be my first fight coming out of the brand new location. That's great. And, and I guess that's just, you know, uh, it's sort of uh, coming from the success of your gym, the, grim, the gym growing. We see a lot of new people join the gym. So that, that's sort of what prompted that, I, I imagine. Yeah, well, I mean, we've had the best program in uh, on this side, I think, of the country. Um, but our facility never matched the quality of our training, right? I mean, I grew up in basically a garage, like training out of a garage, making the UFC out of a garage. So, like, I like the, like, the grimy, small hole-in-the-wall place with, like, paint chips falling down on the wall. But now it's, it's like, it's probably the best facility in Michigan. Um, and it's going to be a mecha gym. I can't wait big part of training camp is recovery. I know you got to always uh, make sure you're keeping those bumps and bruises uh, in check uh, heading into a fight like this. Uh, what are you using right now? What's getting you through for uh, recovery right now? So uh, every time I go to bed or every right, right before I go to bed, I take some, uh, some uh, MTC oil right out of turp house and uh, they hook me up with a, with a, a nice little care package. And it's been keeping all my, uh, my joints good to go. All my, um, you know, my body's just feeling great. I take it. It puts me right to sleep. I wake up fresh and ready. And uh, I assume for your corner for this fight, uh, Cody's going to come make the trip with you because he doesn't have anything booked right now. Yeah, Cody's coming. Um, Jason Fisher's coming. And uh, my wife is coming. Oh, awesome. Get a little vacation out of it. Yeah, actually, she's actually like a black belt in traveling. So <laughs> for her to kind of like come over and she like figures out the whole bus system and uh, what sign say and figure out where to go places so it's actually really nice um where me i would normally just like go to the hotel and then sit there and basically like scavenge for food and stuff she's actually really good at the traveling part i mean she's been basically around the world uh growing up so it's actually really nice to uh to bring that experience and you don't have to worry about the traveling stuff either. You just leave it up to her. I, I'm the same way. My wife's like all into the traveling stuff. So I just I just follow her itinerary and it, it's all good. Um, I mentioned Cody there. Any, any developments on him? I mean, uh, we haven't seen him since his last fight, I imagine. Uh, he's looking to get back in there and get back on the winning track. Yeah, I, he's been training like a madman. Um, we're looking to schedule a fight soon, maybe uh, January, February. Um, nothing's in stone yet, and uh, but we're we're getting ready for battle. So when it comes, you know, and uh, how do you see your fight playing out on the 31st? <laughs> I'm going to knock him out. I mean, that's what I go for every time. So if it happens, awesome. I sound awesome when I say it because that's what I go for. But when it doesn't happen, guess what? It's an awesome fight anyway. So, uh, you know, that's what I'm going for. And, uh, you know, the fans will always enjoy watching me fight because I bring it. And, and if you get this win here, that'll be a huge victory because, again, Damien was last in the UFC. Uh, that always looks good on the resume. Um, have you talked to Ryzen about what's next potentially after this fight and how many fights you have left in your deal? So this is the last fight on my current Ryzen uh, contract. Now, there, there's talk of, like, doing maybe a, a possible, like, Grand Prix next year in my weight class uh, for Ryzen. Nothing's in stone yet. I'm not even sure I'm supposed to talk about it. But – um, if, if that happens, awesome for me personally, with my dogs, uh, Ryzen's taking care of me really well. I've gotten a ton of fights over there. They pay me really well. 
Um, I'm super comfortable over there. If once my contract's up and they throw the right numbers at me, awesome. I'll stay there. Um, I'd be happy to. I, you know, um, but for me, I'm 33. It's all about money. Where am I going to make the most money at? So for me, going there, going anywhere else, I'm going where the money's at. So Ryzen, show me the money, baby. <laughs> there you go. Jerry Maguire quote at the end here. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an awesome card. Ryzen 14, December 31st. Uh, Darren, always appreciate the time, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, the floor is yours, man. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, I have a ton of sponsors. They're like all shooting sponsors. I do have Turp House. So check them out. It's uh, CD oil. And, uh, but all my shooting sponsors, I have GSL Technology Suppressors. I have Phoenix Ammo. I have BG Defense Type A Rifles. I have Oakland Tactical. I have Halfcock Target Steel. Uh, ATI Guns. Guess what? All those. Oh, I also have Victos. Other than Victos, all those companies are Michigan-based companies, So, which is really sweet because I'm from Michigan, and uh, the Murder Midden has a bunch of guns, and you're not taking our AR-15 magazines. <laughs> all right, thanks. Yeah, you can follow me at Darren Crookshank on Instagram, at uh, dcrookshank155 uh, on Twitter, and uh, that's about it.